Hi, in this session we will focus on the linear regression model, starting with fundamental basics and assumptions. We are not going into the detail about how a linear regression model is estimated from a mathematical perspective. Like also in the other sessions, we are not going too much into the kind of math of the model estimation procedure. Uh, we will mainly focus on interpretations that these kind of models provide us. And this is why in the linear regression model we start with main effects. How are these interpreted for different kind of features? So we have categorical, numerical features. And for these different types of features there's a slightly different interpretation. And we will also explain what significant features in the linear regression model mean including p-values and t-statistics. So let's have a look at the main equation of a linear regression model. This is just a linear combination of features that are weighted by the coefficients or weights. And we can write this in vector form like this, x transposed theta vector plus some error term. And essentially the target that we want to predict is this y value here. The residuals yeah, will be these guys here. And these are our uh, epsilons here, which the linear model tries to minimize. Yeah? Essentially, if you have this point cloud on the right hand side, we are trying to fit a linear line such that the sum of all of these errors to the square are minimized in the end. And the coefficients are the yeah, weights of each individual feature that we have in our data. And they can be used to interpret the effect. But we will look at this in the next slides in more detail. There's also this intercept here that will kind of determine where the line starts at the zero point. And this is also a parameter that is estimated by the linear regression model, which means that the model itself contains p plus one weights if we have p or use p as the number of features. So a linear regression model has some known properties and assumptions. I'm not going too much into the detail as you can find this in different sources, like for example, in this book that we have linked here. And we have also linked here a nice blog post where you can check using R or Python if the assumptions of the linear regression model are valid for the use case at hand or not. So one of these properties and assumptions is that the linear regression model assumes a linear relationship between the features and the target. Of course, if the relationship is not linear, then the linear regression model wouldn't be a good choice. Another assumption is that our epsilons, which were these guys over here, are assumed to be normally distributed around zero with a certain constant variance. And with this assumption, we implicitly kind of have also a normal distribution that we assume for the target y given our features x. So since we have this equation over here, if these guys are normally distributed with zero and sigma to the square, then y, which is kind of the sum of these two components, is normally distributed and yeah, it essentially scatters around this value and not around value of zero like the epsilon values. And if this assumption of normal distribution of the residuals is violated, for example, then the inference-based metrics like p-values that we will look at later on, they are not valid anymore. And this constant variance here yeah, just refers to the homoscedastic property that we know from linear regression models. Something that is not homoscedastic would look like this. For example, if you have a line here, as x increases, the variance of this kind of epsilons here changes or increases, for example. This would be then heteroscedastic variance in the end. So another assumption from linear regression model is that 
usually independence of observations are assumed, meaning that this guy and this guy, for example, are not just repeated measures of the same subject, for example. The assumptions that we are looking at here is that features are independent or should be independent from the error term, meaning that if you on the y-axis would visualize the error term and on the x-axis the feature value and then you should see something like a point cloud that doesn't show you a trend if instead it shows something like a non-linear relationship then this assumption here is not valid and the last assumption is that no or little co multicollinearity, strong correlation between features in our data set is given. So now we will look at how the coefficients or weights of a linear regression model are interpreted based on the type of the feature at hand. For example, we will start with numeric feature xj and the interpretation is pretty simple. If we increase the feature value by one unit, then the outcome is increased by this value, uh, ceteris paribus, which is kind of a Latin word that tells you that everything else is held constant, meaning that all other feature values are held constant. And you can see this here in this visualization below. If you have a data point over here and you're increasing the feature value of this observation, then increasing this value will lead to an yeah, um, increase in the outcome of theta, which is the slope essentially. And this interpretation is valid for the whole feature space. So no matter where the data point lies, if you increase the feature of an observation lying somewhere while holding all other features constant, then the expected outcome on average is increased by the weight theta one. We usually encode things like binary or categorical features, here in the simplest case, the binary features as zero or one. The category that is labeled as zero is the so-called reference category. If, or let's say this guy here is a categorical feature that is multiplied with theta two, but does it mean if the feature value is zero, then of course the whole term here is zero. Basically the weight is inactive and does not change or outcome in the end because it's inactive. So for categorical features with multiple categories, for example, L categories, what we are going to do is usually introduce a certain encoding, for example, the dummy encoding, which is basically creating L minus one, one hot encoded features, meaning that we look at the category levels that we have at hand. We leave one of these levels out, which is then called the reference category. In this case, we then of course have multiple binary features that we are creating. Yeah, if we have a feature that has categories, low, low, medium, and high, for example, then uh, if we use H as the reference category, then we create L minus one, in that case, two one hut encoded features and one for category L and another one for category M. And for the category H, we leave this out because we use it as the reference category. And then, for example, this first observation over here has value of L, then we are encoding it as one. The second observation is L as well, it gets also a value of one. This third observation gets a value of zero because it doesn't belong to the category L and also the fourth observation will obtain a value of zero. For the second one hot encoded feature, 
we do the same thing and the interpretation of this categorical feature is done for each category level separately. We get one weight per category level. This is termed here like theta j for feature j and a certain category i in that case. And the interpretation of this is that if we move from the reference category to another category, then the outcome will change by the coefficient of that other category. You know, if we, for example, have here the value h as a reference category and move from h to category m, then we would have a change in the outcome that refers to uh, the coefficient for that feature that is estimated by the linear regression model. And the intercept is essentially here interpreted as the outcome or the expected outcome if all other features are set to zero. Another thing that linear regression models provide us is the so-called t-statistic, which just scales the estimated weights of the linear regression model with the standard error. And the standard error is some sort of reliability score of the estimate. And yeah, it's scaled because usually <clears throat> this weight here depends on the range of the value. So meaning that you can change the unit of a feature, for example, body height in centimeters or in meters, this will affect also the estimate because it depends on yeah, the scale of the feature value itself. And scaling it with this standard error will ensure that uh, t-statistic value would stay the same but have a different coefficient uh, because the product of the weights and the feature values will have to stay in the same. And high t-values usually suggest an important feature or significant feature. And on the right hand side, we have provided a summary of a linear regression model fitted on the bike rental data set, where we want to predict the number of bike rentals depending on yeah, certain features, like the number of da days since 2011, uh, the temperature, the humidity, and so on. And we can see that yeah, uh, especially temperature, which is the feature that we are usually often looking at in our lecture, is the second most important. From the t-statistic value, we can derive a so-called yeah, p-value. If we look at this formula of the t-statistic value, it says that if this coefficient here uh, has a value of zero or close to zero, then the feature will be kind of irrelevant because any feature value is then multiplied with the coefficient of zero and the feature itself won't change the target in our equation. So the p-value is the probability of obtaining a more extreme test statistic if we assume that the null hypothesis is correct, meaning that the lower this p-value, the higher usually our test statistic and this speaks usually against the null hypothesis. So let's look at a concrete example with the bike sharing data. Our linear regression model with these features gives us this table for the weights, standard error and the t-statistic value. And from that we can compute the so-called p-value, which is kind of computed with the knowledge of this value here. Uh, in the previous example, we had a visualization here. If the t-value or the absolute value of the t-value is larger than 2, for example, then the p-value is around 0 0.05. The larger the t-statistic value is, the more significant the feature will be and the smaller the p-value will be because the area below this, yeah. Gaussian curve here will be then smaller if we have higher values for t. So now let's look at the interpretation at this concrete example. If all features have the value zero and the season is winter, because in that example 
winter is the so-called reference category and yeah, we don't have a coefficient for winter in here, meaning that if all of these three other categories of the season are zero, we are automatically uh, looking at an observation that belongs to the season winter. So if all other features are zero, the expected number of bike rentals will then be the estimated value for this intercept over here. Meaning that we have over a little bit over 3000 number of bike rentals in winter. So now let's look at what happens if we look at a categorical feature. What does as this value over here tell? So we said that if all feature values are zero, we are in the winter season, then our expected number of bike rentals was about 3,200. And if we now move from the winter season to the spring season, we will have a higher number of bike rentals that increases by around 862 number of bike rentals compared to the reference category always. Again, Ceteri Paribus, which just means that all other features are held constant. For a numerical feature like temperature, for example, an increase of the feature value temperature by one unit will increase in, you know, 120 number of bike rentals. So this was the yeah, introduction to the linear regression model with an example of how to interpret different types of main effects depending on the types of feature. Bye bye, see you in the next session.